with reactions to Vince McMahon's return and more. This is Wrestling Hub. My name is John and you're watching the Wrestling Report. Before we get into the rest of the video, make sure you subscribe to Wrestling Hub and turn on all notifications to stay up to date with everything in the world of pro wrestling. Also, don't forget to follow us on Instagram at Wrestling Hub Official and follow us on Twitter at Wrestling underscore Hub. Talking on this podcast, former WWE writer Freddie Prince Jr. criticized NXT saying, I know this, it's Impact Wrestling going to be better than NXT because there ain't nothing in the world worse than that show. I've given it a chance like once every six weeks. I'll go, yeah, I'll watch a little bit of it and it is absolute garbage. It went from my favorite promotion when it was black and gold to unwatchable, unwatchable like a local theater production. The last two times I've tried, it was terrible. I really don't like crapping on stuff unless it offends me what they're doing to talent that I care about. Speaking about a potential dream match he tried to have, Kurt Angle said on the A to the K Wrestling show that Bret Hart was always my dream match from when I started in WWE. I'd always thought I'd have a match with him. He went to WCW and unfortunately, he got knocked out and had the concussion and then he had a stroke. I tried to get Bret to wrestle at WrestleMania, I believe 21 in 2005. I understood why he said no because where I am in my life now, I know I can't have the Kurt Angle match that fans expect and Bret Hart was trying to tell me at that particular time, I'm not not the bread heart I used to be and I'm not going to go out there and embarrass myself. Touching on FTR's dog collar match against the Briscoes for the ROH Tag Team title, Dax Harwood said this during his podcast about referee Mike Posey bleeding in the bout. I have thanked Posey so many times for that moment because it made our match. That one little moment took it from a great match to an unforgettable match. He was ready to go with that. I asked him, I have this idea. If you don't feel comfortable, I don't blame you. If you don't want to do it, I totally understand. Here's my idea. I told him and he said, yeah, I'll do it. Have you ever bled before? No, not really, but I'm down to do it. I don't think you would mind if I told you this because because he tried to talk us out of it, but me and Cash, because it meant so much to the match and our legacy and the legacy of that trilogy, that he did that for us and he trusted us to do that and he wanted to be a part of it. Me and Cash wanted to compensate him for that. We made sure that money was taken out of our checks and sent to him and his family before Christmas. I can never thank him enough for what he did for that match, our trilogy, and me and Cash's career. I hope he knows that the money means nothing, but the love I have for him and what he did is way more than that. For that same interview, Kurt Angle would mention that he pitched an idea to WWE for WrestleMania 39 saying, I know they're having a raw 30th anniversary at the end of January here. They're thinking about bringing some WWE legends back for that. I know I was in the conversation, not saying I'm going to be there, but it's possible. Nothing about WrestleMania. I did pitch an idea to them about it, and I can't really tell you right now, but most likely they're not going to use it. There's always a chance they could. So right now, no, nothing at WrestleMania. Hopefully it'll happen. I'm going to be there anyway. They might as well use me. Angle would also know note how he is feeling after a double knee replacement surgery. I'm doing well. I will tell you this, it's a long process. I was improving dramatically the first few months and I kind of hit a wall where my knees are sore all the time. I'm not sure if this is going to last forever. I do rehab them every day. I don't know if I'm overtraining them. I might be, might not be. But at this point in time, I'm doing really well. My legs are stronger than they were before the surgery. So that's a bonus. Talking about the best of seven series between the Elite and Death Triangle for the AEW Trios title, Dave Meltzer noted on Wrestling Observer Radio that there are differences of opinion over who should win match seven. You really want really big stars to have those belts. A championship that's being established without really big stars, there's a million belts, it's going to be nothing, especially with the six-man, which has been a struggle. I saw it in Dallas, WCCW, and I saw it in WCW, and I've seen it in Mexico. But most people who watch American wrestling fans have not seen it, and Dallas was decades ago, and when Crockett had them, it was the Road Warriors and Dusty Rhodes and big, big stars, and that's why it meant something.
While former head of talent relations John Laurinaitis was set to be making an appearance after being fired by WWE, it seems that he will no longer be doing so as Bobby Fulton wrote on Twitter. Yesterday, we announced John Laurinaitis would be doing an appearance with Big Time Collectibles. Upon announcement, we received only negative feedback. After much consideration, we have decided to not work with him. We apologize to those that were offended by us working with him. When talking about CM Punk's current status with AEW, Eric Bischoff said this on his Strictly Business podcast. I'm going to call him Philip because he's no longer a wrestler. He's no longer going to be in AEW this year. Kevin Nash would say something very similar on his podcast previously about Punk as he noted, I hate to beat a dead horse. I'm going to go with our friend Phil. I'm not even going to call him CM Punk anymore because he doesn't work anymore. WWE has now acknowledged that Mercedes is no longer a part of the company, moving her profile to the alumni section of their website. Weighing the pros and cons of MJF potentially signing with WWE when his contract with AEW runs out in 2024, Eric Bischoff said on his podcast, What are the advantages for MJF to stay in AEW? Job security? Great payday, I'm assuming. He's at the top of the card? Probably will be because he's so young for the next five, seven, eight years. The 26-year-old Eric Bischoff would probably bank on the stability and security until I've got enough money in the bank, then I can roll some dice with my career. Look at what Cody Rhodes has done. Cody left AEW, made a huge splash on his return to WWE on his own terms, and if you're right, is going to walk away with the WWE World Championship from Roman Reigns at WrestleMania. It does not get any bigger than that, so if I'm MJF, I'm looking at that trajectory, and I'm going, that could be me. I could do that. I don't know, it's a tough one, but it'll be an interesting one to follow. With it noted by WWE in a statement that Vince McMahon is looking to return as the acting chairman of the board, as he looks to sell WWE, reactions to this would be reported. Fightful has already heard from dozens within WWE who were all floored by the announcement. Nobody in any department, talent, production, creative, or general staff that we heard back from was briefed, tipped off, or given any information before or immediately after the news broke. No one bit, but considering some people from his regime were kept this long, they must have known it would happen. We'll see if they talk to us tomorrow, one talent told Fightful, referring to the upcoming January 6th SmackDown taping. Last month, Wall Street Journal reported Vince McMahon told people close to him he was hoping to return, but didn't stay in what capacity. WWE sources came out of the woodwork to let Fightful know, albeit anonymously, that McMahon was not wanted back in a general sense. Another top WWE talent wasn't only given any information, but also asked what the possibilities of a return to creative would be. The idea that McMahon could return to creative has been a common concern among talent. The two sources we heard from within the creative department had not learned of any adjustments to their duties, and said they were sent some notes for SmackDown shortly before the Wall Street Journal's Vince McMahon story. Keeping with the theme, production employees were also not informed. The unanimous reaction that we gained from the many who commented on the matter was either bad news or news above their pay grade that they wouldn't concern themselves with until they needed to. One source noted the increase in the after-hour stock price. One talent said, Finding out online is scary and it's Vince, so I don't believe a word he says. I hope current management and everything doesn't change, but only time will tell. Before noting they have a lot of respect for Triple H and Stephanie McMahon, another talent says they believe there will be a roster uproar if Vince McMahon returns to head of creative. I can't count how many interviews I've read or people I talked to outside the company that said Vince liked me but I got fired. He didn't like you, he didn't like any of them. He fired or they wouldn't have been fired during a pandemic, one concerned higher up said. I would be blown away if he returned to creative, a recently signed talent said. Apparently, this return by Vince McMahon was not entirely favored by the board of directors for WWE, with WrestleNomics noting the board's response, It is also our unanimous view that your return to the company at this time, while government investigations into your conduct by the U.S. Attorney's Office and SEC are still pending, Vince McMahon returning would not be prudent from a shareholder value perspective.
When it comes to a potential buyer for WWE, PW Insider reported NBC Universal, owned by Comcast, has always been the most likely company to meet. In addition to having the USA Network, they also have Peacock. They also have NBC, which could become the home of pay-per-view broadcast and other special events as it gets harder for networks to get eyes on programming. Also, by purchasing WWE, they would have control of the asset. They could choose who ran it and how they did so. They would also have control of how it would air and the cost of doing so built right in. Fox is also someone I'm sure that WWE would reach out to, as is Disney. The buyer that makes the most sense has the most important thing that WWE needs, a place to air the product. Fans would react to Vince McMahon returning to WWE online as they wrote, If Vince McMahon takes back the control of WWE creative, kiss goodbye to all the recent progress under Triple H. If he's just handling the business side of things, while it looks terrible from a PR standpoint, the on-screen product hopefully shouldn't suffer. I'll be concerned if he starts wedging himself back into creative. Good God. Had to know it was too good to be true. Hopefully he just sells it at this point. WWE has been better than it's been in a long time. And now he's back to end that. Fed is done. Stay home, Grandpa. No. For all the complaining you have to listen to, I'd really like cancel culture to have lasting consequences like one time. It's doomsday, yes it is. And this was your Pro Wrestling News Update. I hope you're all having a great day. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see y'all later.